Now you're talking. There's nothing quite like a cigar. If you remember the great American actor Edward G. Robinson, he memorialized cigars forever by making them the punctuating statement of his tough-talking gangster roles. In truth, he was a polished esthete with a great art collection, and he really enjoyed a cigar sitting down of a quiet evening with a cognac in about an hour of solitude, enjoying the plenitude of artistic riches around him. You know, you know, <laughs> you know, the art of the cigar, or of enjoying a cigar, more aptly put, is beyond the palpable. It's beyond the obvious. It's not just the aroma. It's not just the taste. It's something else. It's a combination of these things. Casey Stengel, that unhappy manager of those ill-starred Mets in the beginning of their existence, used a cigar to vent his frustration at the ineptitude of his players. Can't nobody here play this game? He was known to cry out. And the only solace he had was his ever-present cigar. Three kinds of cigar smokers start uh, with the uh, blue collar guy with a stogie in his mouth, not a cigar, a stogie. Like this, with a clipboard, say. All right, give me three trucks over there. He's just jamming over there. Hey, you guys, get out of that truck and load that. Marking things off. That's also, you see, how, what it does to you. And then there is the other category of cigar smoker that I like to consider that I'm in, which is the esthete sitting quietly perhaps with a slim volume of poems, preferably written by himself. A fine cognac, his beautifully aged cigar, and a well-paneled study, and the world just goes right by. Ernest Hemingway felt that smoking a cigar evoked memories, strong memories for him, in particular, the memories of lost loves, as he did in A Farewell to Arms. People used to smoke cigars with impunity. Now we are thieves in the night, searching for places where we can puff away on our, our secret treasures. It depends on the size of the cigar. It depends on where it's made. It depends on who makes it. A good cigar in an average shape, I would imagine, is not available at less than $2.50 per. The average good cigar that I will smoke is around 4 or $5 sometimes eight or 10 or 12. A great cigar is a combination of things. As in everything else great, balance is the key word. Everything must work with everything else. It's a matter of taste. There are cigars made in other places that are easily as well or better made than Cubans, even more consistent. But there's a particular type of flavor that is only available in a Cuban cigar. My cigar story is not necessarily about cigars, but it happened with a man smoking a cigar. I went in to deliver, I then, a lowly clerk typist in a steamship company, went in to deliver a communique from a vice president whose assistant I was at the time. And I went into Mr. Barnett's office, he was the head man. And he had this marvelous office, this big desk and this big cigar. And he had uh, his imperious attitude. And I handed him the communique and he looked at it some piece of paper I had typed and been asked to type by my boss. And he said, uh, all right, take this back to the mailroom. Procedure, procedure. You were saying? And I remember, I said, I don't work in the mailroom, sir. I said, I work for Mr. Claro. I'm his assistant. And he said, did I hurt your pride? <laughs> well, he had hurt my pride, and I was uh, very quick to stand up for my position. And I walked out of there saying, someday I'll smoke a big cigar and sit behind a big desk like that. It hasn't quite happened that way because I'm behind a big camera usually these days. What I'd like to leave you with when all is said and done is the message that smoking a cigar is a special activity. It's not a mundane activity. 
It deserves a nurturing of the mystique of the cigar. Put yourself in comfortable surroundings, listen to some music, read a beautiful volume of poems, and enjoy. <laughs>